my story. Um, why am I even doing this? For many reasons. In some ways, I feel um, my career is coming to an end soon. And I want to chronicle all of it in the way that I seem to happen. Me. You know, I don't, I don't want no one else telling my story. I, I, I want to tell my story before I leave the industry. One second. The, the way I see fit and what I believe in the most, um, uh, in the most honest way that I can tell it. You know, I don't know if people thought I was going to be driving OTR forever, but that's not true. Or I was going to be, you know, doing this forever. But it's important to tell your story. And, and for some reason, I'm, it's funny how that's, I'm very interested in, in, in telling this story from from front to end. And that's what I'm gonna do. Now, where were we? Oh, where I starred working for CR England years ago. We're gonna get into that today on the Trucker Brown channel. So I started working for CR England, you know, and, and I'm, I'm bright eyed, bushy tail. I, I don't, I don't know what to expect. I just think, you know, I do know that, you know, I'm a trucker now in my mind. I'm not a trucker. I have no idea what I was doing at the time, but I'm thinking I'm a trucker now and I'm about to make a crap load of money. This is what I'm thinking. I'm about to make a crap load of money. I'm about to make basically what I figured I was going to make was about $2,500 a week. <laughs> yeah, that didn't happen. Um, I know I got my license and, and, and uh, I went through the, the first first phase. And um, I think what they pay is around... Um, what they pay is around $400. What they pay is about $400 a week at the time. This is about seven, eight years ago. But I had child support, back child support at that. I'm going over the street. And that is, that is not what I got. I end up getting about $230 a week or $250 a week to live on anyone who's been out here who's been eating at these truck stops know now this and we, what you got to really remember too is when you're first starting off you you don't have a refrigerator to yourself matter of fact we didn't even have a refrigerator in the truck in my in my trainer's truck so that wasn't even an option we were full on eating out of the truck stop. And I got a cell phone bill and about $250 a week. Um, I had a trainer that, it's not like he was just malicious and didn't care. It was like he wasn't on the level mentally to even understand and why to empathize and neither was it his responsibility but I would you're eating at the truck stops dude you're burning and then you're seven days a week you're burning two hundred dollars easy you know now if I was smart which I wasn't I would have I would have been eating dollar menu stuff. I would have went in there and not gotten, I would have went in there, and this is for someone who's about to go through this. 
go in there, you get yourself an entree. You can get yourself a double cheeseburger for a dollar fifty nine cents. You know, um, when you whenever if he lets you go to a Walmart, get yourself a case of water. You understand? And you can just get entrees and the entrees are gonna run you two, three dollars, maybe four dollars. Plus and it's, I, w- I was not in the financial situation to be getting combos and going to Denny's, which is what I was doing, and I was running out of money. And, you know, and I smoke cigarettes, too. That's another thing. So I'm buying a pack of cigarettes every other day, if not every day. And you think, oh, that's not that much money. You know, first load went to, first load of my trainer's truck went to Queens, New York. A pack of cigarettes, a pack of Newports in Queens, New York at the time was $17.97. I remember I went, I walked from where we slept. We like slept on some kind of street. I don't think we're supposed to be sleeping there. I walked to a bodega. I guess that's what they call them. And I got a pack of cigarettes, a slice of pizza, and maybe a drink, and maybe a candy bar. And it was like $38. Blew my mind. Like, I, I'm, I'm from Virginia. I'm from a little bit south. That's ridiculous. Because a pack of cigarettes at the time was costing me maybe six fifty. dollars So, it, I, I, what did I buy, dude? He was like, well, cigarettes, that would, you know, that's, that's going to be 17 something with tax. <laughs> and I'm like, are you kidding me? Had to buy them, you know. I'm addicted to nicotine stale so it's like ugh. that i mean to my budget for the week that hurt and but it, you know it was a it was a wake-up call for for this for my situation you know you're not in kansas anymore you're out here in the real world there is no family with you you're by yourself if you don't manage your money you're gonna go hungry because this trainer is not helping you eat He's not doing it. And he's probably making twenty two hundred dollars off you a week. He just he wasn't, you know, he wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed. He wasn't thinking about you eating. Like if if, if it was so bad, like one time he called me, he was like, I'm at the store. I was like, yo, give me a pack of cigarettes, I can get the money when you get back. I give him the seven dollars. And he hounded me for two days for the fifty eight cent. Like he wasn't playing. <clears throat> I don't hold that against him. That's just the story. So I just wasn't ready. I was I wasn't ready for the fluctuation in price from the states and and how low I was. I was getting two fifty. Then 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 he wasn't even turning in the like at the time you had to fill out these things or he was supposed to fill out this stuff on me and put it into the computer. He wasn't doing that. So I was supposed to be in the first phase for I say four to five weeks. I was in the first phase for three months. I never went to the second phase. Was he already going? He just kept riding me, pretty much, because I was, I was, I was running. We were running so well together. He wouldn't let me off the truck. I didn't know that. I just kept driving until I figured eventually, when I'm done, they'll tell me I'm done. He never put in. When I went to the place, he didn't put in one thing, one sheet, one nothing. I pretty much was hostage on this truck. I'm thinking, is this trucking? Where was I? Uh, the battery died, so I had to charge it, so I'm coming back. But where was I? I, I basically didn't understand or wasn't prepared for, A, how much the, the, the child support was, was, was going to, to hit me in training. Um, I wasn't prepared for the level of budgeting that I would have needed to do. Um, and I was uh, safe to say that I was not, I wasn't seeing any money, dude. I, I was, and it, it, it's not, as I look back now, it is not, um, it is not nowhere near all of, uh, CR England's fault for how I chose to disperse my genetic material. <laughs> That is a decision that I made, so that's no that's not a that's not a hit on on um that is not a hit on hit on um on them. It isn't. It's 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 the situation that I was in and I had to figure out a way to 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 deal with that situation and basically I just 
I kept running and I, I, I got through it. Oh yeah, and he, you know, like I said, he was he was messing up my training. He was not turning in my my um, my paperwork for me to go on to the next level. He was not. He just wasn't doing any of the training stuff as far as the book stuff that was supposed to be done. He wasn't doing any of that. So really, I should have been on his 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 truck for maybe five weeks, and I was on it for three months. So I and then I ended up having going. I had to go to Salt Lake City, CR England, Salt Lake City, and they just when they found it out, they explained it to me and was like, "Yo, we're gonna skip you. You're in the, you've done, you've basically done both your phases. Like your phases are done. I don't even think they call it phases. Whatever they called it at the time, both of the sections are done. You you're going off to get your own truck. So you got a choice. Now me and my boy Troy, he leased a truck. And I got on a truck with him at CR England because, you know, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't either I wasn't ready or I was my homeboy. We were cool. And I was like, yo, I'll roll with you, man. It's whatever. We'll split everything 50 50. We were green eyed. We're thinking, yo, we're leased. We're going to make 37,000 a day. Everything's going to be great. Wrong. It was not great. We were running 5,000 miles and seeing a check of $700. Like, it was, it was, ridiculous then we're looking through the settlement and they were charging him for me being on the truck they were charging him for me being on the truck how we don't know but they were charging him somehow and it, it said it on there it was i don't remember the exact wording so i'm not even going to fumble over it but we basically lasted you know this is the first trucking job i ever had uh, it's not going the way I wanted it to go. We're 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 not we're not making any money. We're going in the hole. So we, you know, we gave him the truck back. Like we gave him the truck back after like like three months. I told him, dude, I'm gone. Like I'm not, I'm not. Dude. He was like, what about the twelve months? Screw their twelve months. When I hear truckers talk about that, oh, the con man, screw that contract. They can't take your license back. So, I mean, <laughs> what's that going to do to me? Oh, well, we'll put it on your credit. At the time, I had terrible credit. Fine room, dude. Like, what are you telling me? I got my CDLs. I'm out of here. Like, I'm not going to sit here and not make money because you can put three grand on my credit. Like, are you tripping, bro? Like, so I chucked deuces to them, and they put it on my credit <laughs> to, to, their, <laughs> to their, um, you know, their uh, professionalism, they were not lying. They put it on my credit for $3,900. I got it knocked off, though. I never paid it. And I didn't care, dude. At the time, I was a 400 beacon. You know, I, I, don't, I need money, bro. I don't, you're talking about credit. I'm coming from a place where no one cares about credit. Like, that's a up there thing to me, in my mind. I didn't even have a bank account. I had no bank account. You know, I was... <laughs> I was like getting stuff off the comm data now that I'm more hip now I'm not even thinking about the the charges that come on a comm data card and me just using the comm data card coming from the streets and not having a bank account they're charging me to they charge you to call <laughs> the comm data card or any of those fuel cards to call that fuel card, they car they charge you the three dollars to swipe it at the ATM, and then the ATM charges you the three dollars to swipe it at the ATM. Like they're nickel and diamond me, dude. Get an account, get your direct deposit. Simple as that. Like you know, so the the CR England thing ended. Now this is two things I will say about that. What I should have did, and they told me I should have trained. Cause back then, I could have trained immediately. That they were there was, from my understanding, the way it was explained to me, there was no uh, grace period. Now let me break this down. Mathematically, I should have trained. Experience wise, I shouldn't have trained. I don't agree with people training two months after getting their license. I don't agree with that. I personally waited three years and some change before I ever had a student. And, you know, I think it's better that way. 
for the overall industry. But, you know, monetary wise, you know, guys were doing it and they were going all fine. But I, I disagree with that because my trainer had only been driving for six months and look what I went through. So, it, you know, I don't I don't agree with it. But I, I left there, man. I was like, you know, this is not going to work. The next place we went to, me and Troy, we went to night transportation. <laughs> night transportation, we were in the orientation class in Carlisle. Yep, we're in the orientation class in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And how do we do it? Uh, no, I went home and drove up, get to Carlisle. It's, I don't know what I was expecting from night. I, I was expecting at least a thousand a week, which was stupid. Cause, and then remember this is, this is six, seven, eight years ago. So, you know, um, I get to Carlisle, I go through orientation. Um, it's for that Carlisle, I was on the drive in division and they had a, their pay scale was not. This is where I learned the lesson of if I'm company, I need to be a flat salary or CPM. Because I didn't know that. And I, they have what you call a slot. They had, because I don't think they have it anymore. They had what was called a sliding scale. And basically, from my understanding of how that worked, a certain distance paid a certain amount, a certain short distance paid a flat amount you know you know back then they weren't big on no one in the industry back then was big on paying detentions that was like something we always fought over and never got so you know i didn't i wasn't getting any detentions or anything like that i basically was ending up with, with between i basically was getting between three and seven hundred dollars a week and i could never peg my check I drove and didn't know what I was making. That was the problem I was having. Now, in my in, in, in night transportation's defense, I also was a super rookie, and I probably had terrible habits. There's another thing here too. I got I'm I'm new. I'm I mean I remember being late for stuff and driving. Like why are you late in driving? I, I was oversleeping. 14 hour sleeper bursts like I, I was I was a rookie I was doing stuff incorrectly so if I was to go back to night transportation now I probably could make $1,300 a week and that see and this is a piece of the game that no one factors in how good are you we're quick to demonize the company quick oh I see our England night transportation but you know if I was to go to your you have a night truck and I was to get inside of your truck and open your logs and look through your logs, I would see another $400 worth of money you were putting on the table, regardless if you were running for CR England, Night Swift, or anyone. So that, that you have to factor that in. I was a sweet meat, flat back, soft thigh meat rookie. Like, that's just what it was. I probably was stopping every hour and a half at every flying J that came past. I probably was, you know, getting off. Uh, 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 tender dicking on the phone hey baby what's going on you know I'm out here I'm big dog Willie what's happening you know I'm laid up you know what I mean fiddling with my balls or whatever and not going to sleep you know see my story I want it to be what happened and I want it to be what I've learned and that way when you watch it you will say oh I won't do that he said 14 hour sleeper births I shouldn't do that simple though Ding. This is where you write down. Don't be in the sleep for 15 hours, man. 10 hours. Get up. Go. That's the rule. You don't sit in the sleep for 15 hours and then be mad that you're late. If you would have got up five hours before, you'd have been three hours early. Tingle on my nose, but you know what are you gonna do? I didn't. I was a rookie. I didn't know. I, you know, and and um, I wasn't making money, and I was blaming them. Which was, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. It probably was me. I probably just sucked in <laughs> night transportation. I'm sorry. Like, and if you if if you would contact me right now, I would go back to your facility. 
look over what y'all got going on right now and and probably have a different view of the company to be honest because i mean what are you gonna do like, <laughs> i was i remember i had a volvo i had a, a cracker jack box volvo i think it was a six something you know it didn't have a window in the back oh i thought i was hot with that volvo so I like i i loved it the turn radius on it was immaculate it was it was it was it was my first time driving anything other than a Freightliner. And I just thought I was the bee's knees, dude. Terrible, terrible. I mean, if you talk to Chris now, he'll tell you I suck it back in it. Eh, what are you going to do? I get to know. But it was, it was definitely, oh, I thought I was, the, I love the dashboard of it. I think that's what it was. The dashboard felt very, I don't know. I just think it felt different than the, um, than the uh, than the Freightliner, but I got I blew out of there in four like four or five months. I could have been there no longer than six months. I felt y'all not paying me, screw y'all, I'm out of here. From there, it's when I entered into the elite brand of trucker, which is a flatbed trucker. So my flatbed guys, we'll stop a second chingle on my noise. Yes, afuera, señorita, aquí, señorita, te las fingers. I was a flat. Let me tell you something. I loved being a flatbed trucker. I did. Couple reasons. Sleep. You basically can run a seven to a seven to seven seven to five in the afternoon shift if you work hard and do what you're supposed to do. Um, not always, but eighty percent of the time. Um, flat seat. And uh, listen, at 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 uh, what am I? Three. Six, seven, eight. No. At nine months of driving, flatbed companies have higher CPMs than the non-flatbed companies. So if you ain't even got a year, being willing to do flatbed can make you a little bit extra money. Another thing I realized too, they got premium trucks over there at the flatbed company. None of this None of this uh, halfway put together. None of the buttons is in the dashboard. No APU. None of that. And I went to the the what I I still believe as a premium company, which is Melton Truck Lines. And uh, I made it. I I have made it in life. I I. I I um I got my truck Maybelline. Mm. 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 Let me tell you something about Maybelline. She was she was built like a brick shit house. Mm. Senorita. I mean, oh, muy culo. She was so bad, dog. See, Maybelline was a T660. Mm. Yes, sir. 15 liter, 10 in the flow. Leathered out. Premium sound system in it, leather seats. I had a, that's the first time I ever even seen an APU. I didn't even, I never even thought of an APU before. This sucker had a Thermo King APU. Son, I used to just trot that sucker in the third gear <laughs> around the yard like a Clydesdale, like I'm trotting that thing. Like I thought I was the man. Oh. I, when I washed her up, she had that, it, was, it had that good royal blue on them, and it had that, um, them flakes in the paint. Oh, I was, I was a super driver. I don't care what you say, I was the man. What can you say? I, like, like, van driver, at the time I was thinking, van driver, what are you talking about? I'm a flatbed driver, I'm over you. Like, you're a van driver. How, I thought a drive van driver was the worst thing in the world. It was like, why are you even talking to us? We're the flatbed. You're a van driver. Like that, 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 that was the the ignorant ideology of it. You know, I was flatbed headed. What, what you gonna do? Whew, I love that truck. I had a Cummins 15 in it. 10. Oh, I used to off-road that sucker. And I got to Melton. I ran into a, a culture. And I hope someone sends this to Melton Truck Lines. Melton, culture, Melton truck lines have a culture of if you do the work, you get paid. Period. 
There's no, maybe you did none of that. You do that work, you're getting paid. I mean, they had a Christmas bonus when I was there. Um, oh my gosh. I had benefits. Um, and it was the hardest company I'd ever ran for. Probably to this day. The hardest company. I, I, I wanted to quit Melton the first two months of working there. Every day, I just wanted to quit. You know, I didn't have the skill. I didn't have the skill to, to, um, to get the, you know, I didn't know what I was doing, you know. I went to Masary, Ohio, and, and they gave us some type of, it was just like you, you sink or swim. We had, what, two days of securement, and then it's like, I remember the dude they gave me, it was Tank, his name was Tank something, was my mentor. He never answered the phone. Um, I just had to figure it out, bro. I had to figure out how to secure a 38,000 pound coil. That is, a, if that is the scariest trial by fire you could ever be in. You know, a, a suicide coil. I to the sky. I think the ones I liked the most were the suicide coil was easier to me in my mind. Thing at the time, it was easier to secure because the, the 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 hole is looking at you while you're looking on the side of it, and the rolling side of it is pointing at your cab, which is I guess why they call it a suicide coil. But it is easier because you can just throw it in, do what you got to do. A um, I was trying to follow the the pamphlet they gave me, and now I'm trying to put a chain on like every five thousand pounds. Do you know how many chains that is? <laughs> like, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? I I had to been out there four hours, four hours. Then I had to tarp it. My tarp was swinging in the wind, dude. Like it, it, it uh, I was falling asleep and just having to re-tarp it in the morning. I was terrible, dude. I just hated it. You know, I was dirty. I couldn't, you know. I'd be happy to get a shower. You know, laundry's different now. Laundry is just I wore it before. It's not like it's dirty. And flatbed, that sucker is dirty. Like you are sweating. Have you ever tarped in Alabama in the middle of summertime? My flatbed dudes are going crazy right now. In the middle of Alabama. Talk about hot. That's humidity. Do you understand me? Where your drawls, your bat, you're wet. You're tasting the salt that is secreting out of your, your, your sweat glands. Just, I mean, I got, I know I was close to heat stroke. I would have to stop and just get in the truck because the APU is running. So I would go back and get in the truck. It's 62 degrees in there. I sit in there and just, I would pound a Gatorade. Cause I had a refrigerator too. First time I ever had a refrigerator. I would pound a Gatorade, dude. And it would like, oh, this is brutal. But I, but I started getting good at it. And what a old dude, a couple old guys that taught me what to do. Because what you do, you learn at the places that you're coming to pick up. Someone there will help you with it. And I learned, you know, I learned the techniques I was supposed to learn. You know, how to tarp lumber. You know, uh, understanding that when you overlap them, you throw the scrap over. Uh, you know, how to, you know, position your body to pull the thing down. Up, go through, shh, yank it down. No, learning the... The, it's like karate moves on how to pull stuff through and not just using your arm. You know, you're 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 yanking it. You pull it through, hold tight, yank it down, hook it in. Like you you're doing things that are making you more efficient. Also, the guy told me how to strap a truck. Don't randomly strap it. You know, once you get once you get the tarp on there, you just go around and just put the hooks on. Hook, 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 go back around, strap the hook, 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 strap the hook,
just learning that, it, I got better, I got faster, I got to the point where I was tarping in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, like, whoosh, done, you know, learning how many, knowing, how, being able to look at a load and know how many straps is going on what part of the load, these are the things you're learning, you're getting better, then I ran into her, and I, re that's where I realized that I was sleeping, I was in, I was inside of the sleeper way too much. And Herm basically taught me, because I've told the story before, I'm not going to bore you with it, but Herm taught me that, you know, you don't sleep in the sleeper. If you have a 15, 15 if you have a 2,000 mile load and four days to get there, roughly, and you drive 600 miles, when you hit sleeper berth, you should be moving after that 10 hours. So if you stopped at 12 in the middle of the day, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 o'clock that night, you should be ready to run another 600 miles. That, you know, I wasn't thinking of that discipline. I was just treating it like a 9 to 5 job. And that's what, that wasn't what it was. Herm, Herman, he unlocked the money for me. The first, the company money. So I'm going to get to unlock the lease money. I mean, you know who he is, but I'm going to break it down in the part three. But Herm unlocked the money, dude, because I was, I was, I was, I got it. I got what he was saying. Ten hours in the sleeper, bro. After ten, you got to roll. This, 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 staying up five, six hours after your shift. Then sleep in eight hours. No, that's not how that works. You need to get off, decompress about an hour or two, sleep for six to seven, eight hours, and you're down the road. Well, I don't want to drive through the night, then you don't need to be stopping at 12. You need to run your clock out till whatever, until you're done with your clock, and then you can go to sleep at night and wake up at seven in the morning. Some people are solar powered where they don't run the truck if the sun ain't up. There's a lot of guys like that out there, so it's called solar power is what they call them. If, 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 they, if, if, if the sun's not in the sky, they ain't moving the truck. And there's companies that are okay with that. Uh, most of them are not, but, you know, it is what it is. But I had to, I learned, and I got good, and the loads got tighter. And I seen a thirteen, I seen a fourteen hundred dollar check. I think one time I seen a thirteen hundred dollar check, plus I had got someone to sign up at Melton, so I had five hundred dollars on top of that. I thought I didn't make a lot. Like I'm a master trucker. What are you, what are you gonna do? Like <laughs> I'm making money. Oh my god! I, I don't know what I blew that money on. Who knows? But it was. It, it, I don't know. Melton just made you feel like if you do the hard work, you make the money. There was no haggle about your check there. It was it was almost it was it was it was close to military. It was just you do what you're supposed to do, you get paid. You don't, you don't. You know, you don't run loads, you be late and if 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 you be late on Friday in flatbed, you gotta wait to Monday because the places you're dropping off at ain't open. So you messed your check up. I someone could have picked up a twelve hundred mile load at fifty three cents at forty one cents a mile. A forty four, forty five cents a mile, they done made some more money. And you lost hundreds of dollars. So it was like, yo, it's up to you to do what you're supposed to do. I enjoyed Melton. I did. I enjoyed Melton. You know, I I like to say Melton was the happiest time of me as a trucker. The happiest time is me. That that is my golden era of trucking. You know, but it wasn't the most money. It wasn't the most money. Eventually, I will start leasing, and that's where everything changed. Thank you.